Hey there, welcome back to Mastering Kinda Master. I know it's been a while, but I've been working on this studio, putting in the windows and stuff, and oh, you look distracted. Oh, that is me back there. Oh, that's done with the Kinda Master mask effects. Now, what's a mask? A mask lets you show part of the screen and not show part of the other screen. And there is a mask in KineMaster, but these mask tools in the effects are so much more flexible and sophisticated. There's a technique to using them, and then you can wind up doing really cool stuff like this. So make sure to like and subscribe, and join me on the other side to learn how to do this new cool technique with these new cool tools. See you over there. Just to begin, this is an advanced tutorial. You'll need to know the difference between layers and clips. You'll need to know how to do chroma keying because I'm going to move fast through those topics. What you're looking at here is actually kind of step two of what is a two-part process. I'm going to show you how to make this movie that has the pink background that we're going to chroma key out, but this is what we're going to do. We're going to build a movie, export it, and then bring it back in here. So again, this is step two, and you can see that I added my movie as a layer because layers use chroma keys and then I go in I turn the chroma key on and the pink part disappears and you can see me walking around behind the windows there that's going to be the second part where we learn how to make those windows into the mask so let's move on to that part now now I have a new project with me walking around in the video in it, and I'm going to add a layer with a PNG in it. I'm going to use a different one this time. I'm going to use this gold mirror. If you don't know what PNGs are, they are transparent partial images that allow transparency to see through them. And so you can find really fun things for this project, like a door or windows or portals to a submarine, anything that you want. They're images, and I can find them if I download them from, I use the site cleanpng.com, where they're free. There's some advertising on there. You just don't click on that. You can also search at Google for transparent PNG of whatever it is that you're looking at for, and then you just import them just like you would a regular image as a layer on top of the content that you're looking to, to uh, mask. All right, I've stretched my PNG out the whole distance and now we're ready to air, add our mask layer, which is an effect available from the KineMaster store. There's three types of masks. There's a linear, a parallel, and a shaped mask. We're gonna be dealing with shaped masks to show you how this works. You can see that there's many choices there. We're gonna use the circle mask, but let me just show you the different other styles of them, the cross, the heart, the free hexagon, all of it. And each of these masks has the ability to change a lot of parameters to it. I'm gonna start just by using this. We're not gonna actually use the heart, but it's interesting to see it if we were working with the heart. All of the stuff that you do in these is in the settings where you actually change the shape of what you're gonna hide and show. So right now, uh, the first thing that I always do is I always take the surrounding area and stretch it out so that it covers the entire screen or covers the part of the screen that we want to. Because what we can do later is we're gonna change the shape of the heart in here and if later you scale it up, then that messes everything up again. But I'm gonna show you this right here is, so in our settings, we have all kinds of controls to change the angle, the scale X, scale Y, position X, position Y, and background color, all right? So what that means is that we can change the angle of the heart, so then that will twist it. So if we had a heart we were trying to match, then that would be great. We can make it wider, and every one of the shapes does all of these changes. We can change the width, the height, uh, meaning, I'm sorry, the scale, so how fat or tall it is, and then we can also change the position where it fits onto our screen, and so we can really get it to match up behind what it is that we're trying to match it up behind. So now I'm gonna change it back to the circle, which is the one that makes the most sense in what we have here, because we're trying to get it to match that picture frame behind us or the mirror behind us. So the next thing that we do is we want to use the arrangement of layers to send it backwards so that the picture is sitting on top of it. The mask will always affect all of the layers underneath it. Just so you know if you have stacked layers, uh, but there's the allowable to have things on top of it and underneath it. So we're good with that. Now let's go ahead and we'll set up, so we're gonna set it up for the chroma key to work. And the chroma key, we change the background color of the mask. 
Now, <clears throat> I'm going to show you this real quick, is that if you don't know, this is a way to select your colors. You can choose any one of these three methods. This way is really great for chroma keys because you can pick the thing that's most likely to key out and not interrupt your video. My video here doesn't have a lot of pink in it. This hard pink doesn't interact with my skin tones, so this will knock out perfectly. But if you wanted to do the typical 100% green screen, you could do that. If you've got grass in your picture, you don't want to probably do that. If you want to have something that's 100% yellow, so using these sliders to pick one of these hard colors, meaning full colors, is a great way to get a good chroma key. I know I said I wasn't going to talk about chroma key, but there's a little tip for you. Uh, so there, now we have it. So we know and what we want to do now is we want to fix our circle so that our circle fits into the picture frame or the mirror frame, what it is. So we're going to go ahead and this looks pretty easy is that I can scale the, it scale Y and it scales up and hey, look at that. I've got it pretty pretty much perfectly fitting, but I'm going to show you that you could change the fatness of it, the scale X, uh, make it more narrow, more wide in case you're doing something like an eye. You could do this to mask out a person's eyes or things like that. Um, and you can also change if you don't have it exactly in the right place on the screen, then you can change the position without changing the shape of it there. All right. The last thing that I'm going to show you is that it is, I'm going to move it over a little bit so you can see this, is that there's also a feather to use in places where the edges of what you're finding might be kind of soft. In our case, we don't need to feather it because we have the hard edges of the mirror. And the last one is interesting is this whole thing is it creates a, it basically turns it into a donut. And this, in this particular case, I thought this would be interesting to use as like an O shape, uh, or, you know, like literally the letter O. Uh, but anyway, we're going to get it to what the intention was. I'm going to move the position back to zero for the X. And then the last step of it, and actually I'm going to move my position down. Although we're not really going to use this again, you want to stretch out your mask so that it covers your whole content. And then we want to export this as a movie. So we're going to go back in into our export menu and go ahead and um, select that. And something important with your exporting, this goes against my video that tells you how to export for the internet. But this is actually every time that I re-import into something in KineMaster, I want to set my setting to full high. It means it's not going to get compressed twice. And so I would not upload this to the internet. And you can see my other video about my settings that I use to upload my content to the internet. But in this case, I do export this at full setting because we're going to use it again. And then we're going to show you as before uh, how this gets imported back in one more time. After I exported that, I realized I wanted to show you how to do this, that to have more than one mask in a screen, because my original version did, and so I want to show you how to work it the same kind of way. So we're going to do that now. So what you're going to do is, first of all, you're going to, we're going to go ahead and we're going to duplicate our content. We're going to duplicate our picture frame. We're going to move it over to the side. We're going to move the second one over to the other side. Now, the next part is we're going to duplicate our mask, but then you're going to see that we have to resize the mask. So there's going to be two of the masks sitting on top of each other. You just want to make sure that you cover the entire space. And now we're going to rearrange the layers so that they go behind the frames. And as you can see, when I resized the mask, then the size of the circle changed. This is what I was talking about before. But so now all we need to do this way, it's pretty easy to go in there and change the dimensions again. In this case, it was easy enough just to change the size on the two. So now we have two portal windows and it looks more like what the original uh, show and you can kind of get an idea of how this works to have more than one mask on a given screen. So we would export this. I'm not going to do that again right now. And then you'll have the exported version with multiple frames on it. And just the last little bit, I know that you've seen this before, but let's go ahead and take this layer that we just made, the double window one, bring it in here, and we check the box. We go in and we go to the chroma key to take the pink part out, turn it on, and boom, we've got it. I wanted you to see that this can be done in the different version, shrink it down, and now we have two windows, which I thought was kind of cool. I actually did think they originally mirrors, but they do pretty good job as windows. I hope this gave you some ideas to get really creative. You can do all kinds of shapes. Like I said, you could try things with eyes. This already kind of looks like a pair of eyes to me. Um, whatever you want, doors, windows, and it's a cool way to have things show up behind where they were not originally going to be. Get out there and make something really creative with this and maybe come back and share it with me.
All right, I hope I made that clear and I hope you have some ideas in your head to do some cool new stuff. I just touched the surface of it. Dig in and check it out if you have any questions or comments. Leave them for me. If you have any ideas for future videos, ask for them. And otherwise, it's your turn to get out there and make something cool with the best video editing software for your mobile device, KineMaster. I will see you the next time. KineMaster.